battle computer at full power. All right, fellas, MGTOWs, MRAs, let me ask you this. Let's say you're going to fight an enemy, and that enemy is a 20-foot tall robot with indestructible armor with multiple deadly weapons, but it has a single orange extension cord trailing out of its leg, completely undefended, powering the entire thing. Now, are you going to go right up to this massive, deadly robot's face and just duke it out with that bitch? Or are you going to just go around and cut that cord? If you said the first thing, then just stop watching because, I mean, come on, you... So, what about the men's rights movement? What are they really doing? Well, what are rights? It's a legal matter. So, what are they fighting? What kind of arena are they fighting in? Well, that would be the legal system, and underpinning that, the political system. Now, feminism pretty much has those under control. You don't attack a fort at its most well-defended fucking point. So, in this analogy, what's that little orange extension cord? It's pretty simple. Women aren't the enemy, and feminism is not the enemy. Men, it is our hearts that are the enemy. Well, I think there's a big problem with your analogy, and it's a very common problem that people fall into when they try to come up with metaphors to describe uh, social systems, which is that you have eliminated the social aspect of the system. There is not one extension cord that can be cut. There is an extension cord for every single man in the world, right? Or every single man in a given society. You, you pulling your plug, you disengaging from the game doesn't change anything. Yeah, you always have the option to disengage. But that's not the point of the men's rights movement. The point is the men don't want to disengage. They just want a fair deal. So you're saying, well, the way to get this fair deal is to disengage. Well, I mean, you know, <laughs> I don't know. Really? I don't think you're going to get a fair deal. You're just going to disengage. You're just going to opt out. All right, but, you know, you're not going to get all the things that the system has to offer. Some people want those things. Some people want the relationships, the marriage, family, a decent job, etc. Some people actually want those things, right? You don't have those things now. So, you know, you can say, well, all we have to do is stop wanting things and become little Buddhists, and that solves all our problems. Yeah, well, I guess, but the other approach is to actually go out and fucking do something to get what you want, to actually make it work. You know, society might be making it harder, they might be fucking up your shit, but it's not impossible, right? Lots of people do it. The MRM are just people who say, look, we have these political objectives. We want to try and accomplish them through the political process. Your MGTOW philosophy doesn't accomplish those gains, right? It's just an opting out. It's saying, well, I didn't get the government that I wanted in this town, so I'm just going to leave the town, right? I'm just going to go and live in the wilderness. That's a perfectly valid option. But, you know, most people are not going to follow you into the wilderness because they don't like the town council. Most people are going to just put up with the bullshit and try to fix it. Our willingness to believe that we can make it work, that we can get married, that we can ask for fair terms in a system that has no duty to give us any kind of fairness. I mean, really think about it. If you are a farmer and you need workhorses, and you have a great number of them that will willingly come right up and say, yoke me, just treat me okay. Well, suppose you get some of them that say, I want to negotiate for a better deal. Well, what fucking incentive does that farmer have knowing that there are countless beasts of burden willing to submit themselves to be his workhorses? Hmm? Well, okay, so I think 
you and the MGTOWs in general need to define what you think a fair deal is and then consider whether that fair deal is realistic. Like, could it exist in the universe as we know it? Is it incompatible with biology? I think a lot of MGTOWs and left-wing MRAs really agree with the feminists. They just don't agree with their hypocrisy, right? But what they really want is everything to be the same. What they want is for women to ask men out on dates and for the sexual marketplace to be symmetric. And that's never going to happen because the sex cells are asymmetric. One gamete is bigger than the other. So that makes one gamete swim toward the other. And then the body that produces the gamete you know, does some of the swimming now, right? So women can you know, sit around and wait for the men to come to them. If we're talking about what is possible, really the only feasible exchange is what you dismiss as traditionalism. Mm, not very much. What is the weakness of feminism? The willingness of men to submit. The MRM, that's just trying to negotiate a better deal with no fucking leverage. So what's the strategy? Well, the only way to win is not to play. You opt out. Now to address the enemy that is your very heart, the great greatest number of men, they want that finding the right woman and settling down with her and having kids and a fulfilling life, you know, white picket fence, knowing that those kids are going to be raised right, having that wife and yourself partners in life, it's, it's a nice dream, but you're going to have to give it up. And I know, it's tough. And I hate to be the guy to slap you right across the fucking face and tell you this. You're a man. It's going to be a tough life. Now what you got to choose is how it's going to be tough. Now it can be tough with you giving up on that dream because buddy boy, I'm not going to say it's not going to happen, but I'm going to say that the price will be your very soul. So what are your options here? I mean, you can give up on that dream. You can try to go along with it and essentially be a hostage your entire life in constant worry of when that sword of Damocles will drop when somebody finally decides to cut that fucking thread okay <laughs> okay don't you realize what you've just described is called life that our lives are always like that that the sword of Damocles that hangs over us is death, is destruction, is chaos, right? Everything in life is like that. Any kind of order you build up can be destroyed. If you have a child, the child can die. If you get into a relationship, you fall in love with this woman and she's a wonderful person and then, yeah, she could cheat on you, she could leave you, she could die. All sorts of bad shit can happen. That applies to everything, right? So what you're saying is, if there's any possibility that something could fail, then we must not try to make it happen. So it's better to not have lived at all, because once you're alive, you have to worry about death. Okay, Inmendum. <laughs> you look a lot like Snake today. It's not really a man's nature to complain about unfair treatment, as it, especially when it comes to as it pertains to women, okay? We're just not really wired that way. Men's rights, the guys who really go for that are, say, guys who bought into the system and they got fucked over bad, or they know a guy and they saw him just being a paragon of virtue and being used up and spit out, and it grinds their gears, so they join. But the reality of the situation is it's not really a common mindset among men. And you have to have a, a strategy that's consistent with human nature. 
or specifically the nature of the demographic who needs to take action. So men, men going their own way, it's much more consistent with male nature. It's basically, here's the reality of the situation and I am going to adapt to it and it behave effectively within it. All right? Don't go to the table begging for fucking scraps, you just walk away. Well, I mean, it's hardly an adaptation. It's uh, a retreat. It's saying, okay, we can't win, so we're not going to play. We're going to walk away. Man, that's an option. But you think that's consistent with male nature? You think that's more consistent with male nature than trying to find a solution or than trying to organize politically and change the rules of the game? I really don't think that is. I think male nature is more consistent with trying to solve problems and not with walking away from women and children. Men will sacrifice a hell of a lot for sex, for the love of women, for respect within society. That's male nature. Another problem with the MRM is this. You get a... you have a cause. Like, we need to re address this concern, this imbalance of justice. So an organization forms to accomplish that, and then the jockeying for power begins, the p politicization begins, and, well, I mean, I saw just recently, they, they, ABFM hired on a fucking traditionalist. I mean, come on, traditionalism? Yeah, like, come on. Biology? <laughs> Who ever heard of biology? What the fuck is that? But, he's still buying into the age-old paradigm. I've got to be a man. I've got to be successful. I've got to make something of myself. i got to make a lot of money. Make my way in the world. Well, you know, all of that is really based on our competition with other men for women. Not to quote Jesus again, but blessed are the poor in spirit. What do you need all that money for, you greedy bitch? Because I'll, I'll tell you what the effect of it is. It's another thing that can hold you hostage. Oh yeah, you have your career, and you have your money, but does it make you happy? Happiness doesn't exist. It's just one of those, um, it's one of those flying spaghetti monster things, all right? There is no happiness, okay? There is no heaven. There is no God. There is no happiness. I mean, especially considering how you have to be so cautious anytime you get into a relationship. Because you have a ready-made hostage that can have a gun put to its head and say, Motherfucker, give me what I want or I'll blow your fucking career away. I've heard a saying, freedom is another word for nothing to lose. Yeah, it's freedom is just another word for nothing left to lose. I mean, it's a good song, right? It's about being young and being in love and then, and then losing somebody that you love. <laughs> it's poetry, man. And there's a truth to it. There is a truth. That is freedom. Having nothing is a kind of freedom. But most people don't want freedom for its own sake. Freedom in and of itself is meaningless. What really matters is power or agency not freedom. And people say that like it's a bad thing. Because what is all that shit you have really worth if you're not happy, if you live in fear? Be a man. Men are fearless. Come on. Don't fucking, don't appeal to masculinity when what you're basically saying is give up, surrender, you know, retreat. It doesn't work. I have quit Oxycontin, like popping handfuls a day, had some terrible withdrawal, and I'm fine. I don't crave it. But still, smoking, that's hard to give up, even though it's not quite as powerfully addictive. And why? Because it's at every street corner. It's always within reach. Same thing with women and the indulgence of their womanly nature. They can't really be faulted for it any more than an addict can be faulted for relapsing when they're absolutely surrounded by users. See what I'm saying? 
No malice toward women or feminism. No thinking the system's against you. Just look at reality and do the rational thing with no anger or hate in your heart. Have a nice day. When I first saw this video, I thought you were trolling. I thought this was a joke. But I think you're serious. I mean, I think this is what you really believe. I don't know, man. <laughs> you might want to rethink it. I mean, maybe this is your attitude toward life because that's your personality. But there's nothing rational about it. It's like you're trying to justify your tendency to do nothing, right? Your laziness, right? You're a lazy savant. That's what you like to think of yourself as, right? Well, fine, but I mean, most men are not like that. We need to go out there in the world and do things. And a philosophy of passivity is not going to appeal to most people. And I also think you're mixing up the personal and the political. The MRM is a political movement. It has political goals. It takes political action. Now, you may think all politics is futile, but, you know, people have actually accomplished things in the political arena. MGTOW is more about your personal life. It's not really a political movement. So the MRM and MGTOW are not really contrasting opposites. MGTOW can't solve political problems because to solve political problems, you have to engage. It reminds me of this, um, I think it was a Charlie Breno, it was a Calvin and Hobbes comic where uh, Calvin said, my new rallying cry is, so what? And Hobbes said, that's a tough cry to rally around. And Calvin said, so what? I don't know, I thought it was funny. To me, that, that is kind of what MGTOW is all about, right? It's just saying, so what? And, you know, that's fine, but if you don't care, then you really don't care. And nobody else is really going to care about you, right? If you go your own way, then you go your own way. So, um, yeah, anyway, I enjoyed most of your videos, and I enjoyed this one. I thought it was funny. So uh, take it easy.